I'm not making any money talking these days. Good Christ, 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 Christ. <laughs>
you know, Vince might actually rebound from this. I mean, it's because she's a hooker and he could paint himself sympathetically and he could somehow get the public on his side if he tells the right story. So he could still have a job. Um, you know what? Fuck that. Let's release these photos and make sure he never works again in any capacity whatsoever. Unless there's a job for beating up hookers. Because he is very good at that. If there's somehow someone hiring uh, a guy to just mow through hookers, then boom, Vince is in. He goes on the headset and he cleans house. And he cleans house with a big sham wow. And, and then on the crime scene, there's blood everywhere. And it's like, it looks terrible. But when you think about it, two sham wows, that crime scene is fucking good as new. You don't even have to think about it. You just get a couple of sham wows, boom, boom, boom. I don't want to ring that sham wow out. I got to be honest with you. Because that's just going to uh, look like the hallway in The Shining. But, man, it is uh, it is just a bad uh, scene. But, again, I, not you could clean it up very quickly if you just little uh, get two sham wows. That crime scene looks fantastic. Uh, and my favorite picture from the scene is, uh, sure, everybody's like, oh, there's condoms in the bed. Well, good. I mean, that shows that Vince isn't a complete fuck-up. I don't know what he's doing wearing condoms if he's putting his tongue in her mouth. Again, I, t- I covered this last week. But, uh, but just the very fact that the crime scene photos brought a second wave of nonsense, I had to go, all right, I got to talk about this. But uh, my favorite crime scene photo is uh, is there's like, a, you know, his room, there's blood and like champagne bottles and open liquors strewn all over. And then he's got a laptop. <laughs> Vince has a laptop out all set up with like and a, and a chair was there. However, the chair is now covered in blood and knocked over. But uh, but I, I enjoy the fact that Vince was sitting at the laptop somehow crafting business. Like, what was he doing? He's just over and over just typing sham. Wow. Sham. Wow. Sham. Wow. Sham hyphen. Wow. Slap chop. Slap. Wow. Slam, chop, slam, shop. What? <laughs> we were talking about it, and Lily's like, that's why the cooker beat him up, because they were fucking, and in the middle of it, he had inspiration for some, like, some new product. And he ran over, and he was writing, slap, wow! He was typing it, and then she ran over and uh, grabbed him, and then uh, upset everything, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> I love the fact that Vince would ever be seized by inspiration at all, ever, <laughs> in his life. <laughs> And by the way, how happy is Billy Mays at this point after calling out the sham wow guy and he had his own product? And then I, 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 I actually delved into it. Sadly, I thought I loved infomercials until I went online and then I found out I really love infomercials because they're like at war with one another because it's, you know, there's money to be made. So these people are fucking cutting each other's balls off. Billy Mays, I guess, a couple years ago had come up with like a sham wow, but he didn't come up with the great name sham wow. His is like, you know. Uh, you know, glam sham. I don't know what the fuck it is, but whatever it was, it was a, it was another paper towel that wiped up a bunch of stuff. And I don't know who is having these spills. I, who the hell is spilling this much liquid? Again, the biggest spill I've ever seen was the hooker blood in Vince's hotel room. Then you need a sham wow. But I mean, anywhere else, I don't see anyone spilling that much liquid at any time. Who's who spills a gallon of milk, and then watches it continue to spill without standing it up? Nobody. Jesus Christ. Folks, you don't need these. Who needs the thirstiest towel in America? No one. <laughs> Unbelievable. But Billy Mays is like, he's like gloating that, that Vince went down because I guess they were having a, they had a sham wow, a sham off, I suppose, uh, online. And, it, and the sham wow crushed Billy Mays' paper towel because his was from a couple years ago. And then Vince puts up the sham wow. And this guy's like, oh, you're ripping off my product. Well, no, it's just, I invented another paper towel that cleans up a bunch of shit. You're the only guy in the world that can invent, that invent a thirsty towel. Fuck that. I'm in. And I love the way also that I'm saying Vince invented the, Vince did nothing of the kind. <laughs> Vince, Vince put on the polo shirt that had the ShamWall and, and the headset and talked. That's all he did with his ridiculous uh, New York-looking head. Oh, he looks like a, a guy. It doesn't, he looks like a guy that Tony would have whacked in The Sopranos. I mean, he's just got that weird fucking jawline. and uh. Or you know who he looks like? He looks like the guy who would have been going to get Uncle Junior's mail like before, Bo- before Bobby got the job. They would have said, hey, you know what? you you got to babysit Junior. And he'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to do that, but he's got to move up the ladder so he can't complain about it. That's who Vince was. Uh, why don't I even talk? I don't even know why I talked about this because we were looking at the pictures and it just, uh, uh, again, I covered it last week, but the pictures, man, they deserved a second, uh, a second run because Jesus, are they awful? And I'm, I'm fascinated by these pitch men guys anyway, because, uh, let me ask you this folks. Uh, how do you feel about your business card? How do you feel about your business card? Huh? Because your business card is the most important thing that you could possibly ever have for your business. Uh, forget presentation or plan of any sort of uh, kind. You need a business card that grabs people's attention. You need a business card that should be so impressive, even if they hate you, they won't throw it away. You want to know where I heard that from, folks? Joel Bauer. That's my new fascination. Joel Bauer. He's a guy online 
who it's uh he's an infotainer. That's what he calls himself. He's an infotainer. And the best here's how crafty he is. Like he doesn't think stupid people can see through his bullshit, but I, maybe he they can't. That's why he's the infotainer. He has this website and I went to it, uh Joel Bauer. Uh he's on YouTube, you can find him. You know what if you Google uh Google your business card is crap. No, don't, don't go to YouTube and do that. Your business card is crap and you will get this video of him. It's I can't explain how brilliant it is. It's just a guy who's sitting there telling you how great he is because he made a business card that has like a pop-up thing. You have to see it. I can't explain it. But he spends the whole time taking regular business cards. He goes, you know this card? See this card? It holds a crease. Not impressive. It means nothing to me. It means nothing to me, this business card. You need a business card. And he actually used that line, your card should be so impressive, even if they hate you, they won't throw it away. I get news for you. Even if I love you, I'm throwing it away. Who the fuck keeps business cards? I, I, in the old days, I used to have one of those business card caddies with like the you know you were to insert things in the plastic uh, sleeve and stuff like that then they invented electricity and nobody fucking needed to save those things anymore i've thrown away piles and bushels of business cards and i still carry business cards just because i think it looks more professional than scrawling my number on a napkin and trying to you know i'm not because you know what when i'm trying to give someone my phone number i want to make sure they realize that it was our business and not because i was looking for mr good bar i want to make sure they <laughs> I don't want to have Richard Gere in my house stabbing me at the end of the at the end of our time together. So I want to make sure that it looks professional. I get, that's the only reason I make business cards. So they have my something with my name and phone number on it for somebody, and then they can put it into their goddamn phone. And also, you know what, folks? If if you ask me for my number and I go to give you a card, don't go bup, 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 and then whip out your phone and have to type it in while I'm talking to you. I understand for you that's convenient because you don't want to take my card, but it's not convenient for me at all because all of a sudden you're doing fucking stenography when I'm trying to give you my goddamn phone number. <laughs> Seriously, take my card and do it later. That's what I do. I do it very light, uh, nicely and politely. I take your card, and, uh, and I look at it, and I go, you know what? Your business card is crap. And then uh, I, <laughs> but I still take it. I go, take, it keeps a crease, and I fold it in half. Joel Bauer is my hero now because he's awful. Because, again, any of those people who bamboozle you, you have to go. It's in, uh, his Google Infotainer. It's going to come up. And his, his website, the, the splash page of his website, it's got a video of him, like a three-and-a-half-minute video. And underneath, it's got your name and your email. And it says, your your information is confidential and will not be shared with anyone. So this three-and-a-half-minute tape, he just starts telling you why he's great and why you need to get on board with him. I mean, and you don't even know what he does. I have no idea what Joel Bauer does. <laughs> he's a public speaker. So the fact that he's trying to convince you that he's great and you need to follow his system to learn how to, what, publicly speak? We all know how to fucking publicly speak. You know what he's doing? He's trying to teach you how to baffle people like he fucking baffles people. That's all it is. This whole thing is a network of trying to teach people how to fool other people into giving them fucking money. That's it. That's what the whole house, this entire thing is a house of cards in pants. That's what this whole thing is. Joel Bauer is a house of cards in pants, ready to fucking topple over at any second. The second anybody figures out his ridiculous upside down fucking pyramid Ponzi scheme, Bauer's going down and he's going to be buried under a fucking ton of bad business cards. They're just going to put him in a hole and bulldoze a mountain mountain of business cards on top of Joel Bauer. Your business card is crap. <laughs> it, you watch this three and a half minute video and he's so smug. He's like wearing a suit and he's leaning back and he's like, yeah, you want to learn how to do what I do? That's fantastic. You know what? Uh, a lot of celebrities have learned how to make the most of their time from me. Uh, your Greg Ellis's, uh, your Mark Walker Thompson's. Who the fuck are these people? <laughs> no one knows who these people are, but then the best is he has testimonials from those people. You know who they are? They're infomercial people who do the same thing he does. They're not celebrities or stars. Maybe in your fucking circle they are, but all they are are people who fool people into giving them money for no reason. So I tried to click through the splash page after watching, of course, the three and a half minute presentation. I went, I need to learn more about Joel Bauer. I clicked through and it says you must enter your email address. That's the fucking trick because he wants your information so then he can bombard you with more videos and ridiculousness to try to convince you to get on board with him. What a fucking scam. And these guys come out of the woodwork, especially now with the economy as bad as it is. Uh, you, you turn on the TV and it's all these real estate seminars and all this bullshit. I'm, I laugh when I see a real estate seminar. I go, really? That's what, what are you teaching me? How to get out of real estate? Ten years ago, these people were telling you to buy everything in the world and flip it. And now they come on telling you how to be cautious in this market. Well, it's your fucking fault this market became this market. You and your fancy business cards. you got to see this, your, this clip. Your business card is crap. Who is fooled by this business card? He's Because you think he's kidding. That's the best part about the entire clip is you think he's joking. He holds up this business card and he goes, you know what? This is the most impressive business card I've ever seen in my life. It's mine. <laughs> well, thanks, Joel.
<laughs> uh, thanks for the ringing endorsement. I'm glad that you love your business card. He goes, it's embossed. It's got a, a foil. And, uh, and he pulls, then he like does this thing and he pull, his head separates from it. And then you open it and he pops up like a children's pop-up book. And he's like, it doesn't have my title. It doesn't have that I'm a CEO of any kind. It tells you what I do. I generate excitement and I draw crowds. That doesn't tell me what you fucking do. <laughs> Believe me, a homeless guy dancing draws crowds. <laughs> a guy getting pulled over and yelling at a cop draws excitement. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to make fucking money from it, Joel. I love the guy. I can't. I love hick, hick, hucksters and pitchmen. I need to, and I could be that. That's the problem. I am. I am merely fifteen minutes of focus a week from being that guy. <laughs> I, you don't think I could put on a nice suit and walk around telling people to give me money and trying to explain to them, uh, you know, why they should be doing what I think they should be doing? When in reality, I'm not telling them to do fucking anything. <laughs> what is this podcast except for an infomercial with humor put in? I think. <laughs> I don't know. Literally, this is you know what this is an infomercial on how to sell the word fuck. That's what this uh, entire <laughs> podcast is every week. It is an infomercial in, in favor of the word of obscenity. I am I am peddling obscenity. I am Larry Flint in the seventies. I am if Jerry Falwell were alive today, he would be coming after me and taking me down. He in a battery of suits, and I'd just be sitting there with a fucking hat with a propeller on it, spinning it in the courtroom, waiting to go to jail, because I have no money to defend myself. Because I have not used my powers for evil. I use my powers for good. I use my powers for entertaining. If I went ahead and focused my my brain and had some sort of laser-like intensity and realized what I was going to do, I would fleece fucking everybody. I, I like it's so fun. I have a friend who's in Mensa, and he makes me laugh. He's like, "Oh, I go to Mensa meetings. Who the fuck goes to Mensa meetings? Can you think of anything worse than that?" I just a bunch of people, you know, swinging their their not even their dicks around. They're swinging their brains around, trying to impress one another. <laughs> you know what? I don't come at me from that angle. I want to join Mensa because you know what? I've taken IQ tests and I've done all that shit. It's ridiculous. My IQ is like four hundred. I mean, it's wrong. And uh, and that by the way, that might not be accurate. I could be one fourth of that or maybe less. But still. I can tell you this, I know how many sides are in a fucking octagon, and I can put a triangle inside of a fucking triangle. So, all those tests are ridiculous. Does that mean anything that you're in Mensa when you can go, You really? You, some guy got on a train in Boston, and another guy got on a train in Atlanta? I don't fucking care. Who's he blowing on that train? That's what I want to know. I want to know the story about who he banged on that train. I want to know about the chick who had, like, you know, fucking black gloves on, and uh, you're never going to see her again, and you go, hey, let's meet in the dining car for some peanuts and ass. Terrible. I don't get it. I don't understand Mensa. These a bunch of guys, like I said, just oh hey, we're really smart. Fuck you, you're smart. You know what? I want to join Mensa, and I want to be the John Blutarski of Mensa. <laughs> I want to show up and just be the fucking Belushi. I want to wear the college sweatshirt, and I want to have fucking pencils in my nose and just be an ass. But then when they're like, dude, are you supposed to be here? I'll be like, you know what? Whip out the test, motherfucker. And then I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly when that train's getting to fucking Chicago, and I'll tell you exactly who's picking up the motherfucker who took that train. So why don't you blow me and get me a math book, and I will do a fucking equation that blows your ass out. Fuck that. Mensa. Goddamn smart asses. And the thing is, it's worse. I recognize smart people are brilliant, and I think smart people should be running fucking everything, and don't let me near it. But that's the point is, I'm smart enough to where I could run it, but I just can't focus enough to get it done. I do this. I come here and I sit amongst a forest of fucking box brothers waiting for this goddamn Christmas tree to fall on my head and stare at a grass skirt popping out of a goddamn uh, uh, handy bag. That's what I do. I come here and I see a giant pink fucking head and a, a wall full of yellow bubbles, and I'm like, Jesus, this is great. Let's do a goddamn show. How about if I sell a box set of this nonsense and see if anybody commits to it? Unbelievably, they did. Shockingly, I've convinced people to buy 52 episodes of this. Why? Because I added in more of my ramblings via the, the, the written typed word. Maybe I am a fucking huckster. Maybe I am a goddamn bamboozler. Maybe I did step off a fucking cliff and t I can convince everybody to fucking catch me. That's what I did, goddammit. Forget it. My laser-like focus is coming into play. I am taking everybody down. I am going to get a whole fucking army of you people, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to listen to me and then do nothing for an entire fucking week. That's it. Quit your jobs, folks. Let's go. Let's 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 ruin this economy. Let's all fucking stop doing whatever we're doing. If you're on a bus or you're on a plane or a train right now, just stand up and go, you know what? Fuck you. And take your shirt off. For no reason. I want to see what kind of power I really have with this goddamn show. That's it. Stand up, just yell, fuck you, and take your shirt off. 
and then sit down like nothing happened. See if anybody says anything. See if like a stewardess or, or a, the bus guy, I don't know who the bus guy is. Is there a guy in the bus, like a conductor? What if there was? How, the bus would seem a little more classy if there was a conductor on board when you would get on. And instead of the, just the driver going, man, pointing to the back, if like a guy walked through in a pillbox hat and punched at your ticket, that'd be awesome. Because then it's like the train and the plane. Those get, you know, it, There you have like a butler, like a flying butler who helps you out. On the bus, there's no butler. You're your own butler. Fuck all that. I, I, I want a butler. I, we need a bus butler. That's what we need, goddammit. We need a bus butler to walk around and punch your ticket and then and, and shoo the homeless off and, and clean up seats and get that smell out of the bus. I need a goddamn bus butler. <sighs> I have no power. I have nothing. Absolutely nothing, folks. That's what I bring to you. Although, you know what I do bring? I bring the powers of prognostication. Because last week, what did I tell you? There were going to be fake Twitters about people and then someone was going to get jumped and killed. Did you see this week that Tila Tequila had a fake Twitter that said that she was murdered? Did you see that? No? Are you even talking to me? Hello? It's all right. Sit down. Put your shirt back on and sit down. We're okay. Because, uh, honestly, right now you're sitting there with your shirt off, and, uh, and and you're kind of beat red a little bit from standing up and yelling, fuck you, in the middle of wherever you are, and your shirt's off, and you're go- and you're, go- you're rethinking it, aren't you? Because I had swept you up there. I proved my Joel Bauer-like power into getting you into doing something, and now you're sitting there topless going, fuck. And you're crying like Coco and fame, aren't you? That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> You're like kind of covering up a little bit and like, oh, this is, <laughs> and you're crying a little bit. You're crying, you're crying a little. It's all right. Douse your tears. We're all going to get through this. Everybody's going to move forward. So, uh, so uh, I said that thing of last week about like fake Twitters and people getting jumped. And, uh, and then I got to admit, man, I got to chill because I went online and someone from like two nights ago from Tila Tequila's personal Twitter. I don't know what the fuck that means, but she, she, it was like, burr, burr, you know, someone said that. And, uh, and it said, Tila Tequila is dead. And then 10 minutes later, and by the way, I need to tell you, I don't follow Tila Tequila's Twitter. <laughs> I saw this after the fact. It's not like I was up at 3 in the morning and went, oh, my God, Tila Tequila's dead. Uh, I'm not one of her many followers. Um, but it said, Tila Tequila is dead. And, and then, because if you've seen the Twitter screen on, on a computer, not just on your phone, but, you know, it's just a, it's a, a you know, a litany of words. I don't know, a litany of words. <laughs> Oh, I'm stupid. You know what? Mensa right now is just tearing up my application. Uh, you know, and, that, and you know what? And they're going to hand me the pieces and say, put this back together to see if I get back into Mensa. And that's it. I just got to recreate my application uh, from the scraps that they've turned it into. I can do that. I'm back in. Give me my college sweatshirt and give me the pencils in my nose. Holy shit. I'm going to eat a golf ball. All right. Uh... <laughs> this is uh that's all from a movie all right so what's they talking about tila tequila so she's uh, uh she, but it said it said tila tequila is dead and then like 10 minutes later it said uh i broke into her house and killed tila tequila uh, or you know i and her dog whatever and i said tila tequila is dead and i looked at it and i could admit i got like a chill from it like it was really weird even reading the story and knowing that she wasn't dead and seeing what happened just just to see, because I used to get a thing when I was a little kid, um, there would be tornado warnings that would come on the TV and I would be so scared out of my mind because it was actually like the television knew you were there and was communicating with you. <laughs> so that's why Twitter's weird to me because it's like, maybe that's why I'm scared of Twitter because Twitter is actually like, like in real time identifying that you're there reading it. And it's, it's like tapped into your, into the zeitgeist where it knows that it's, your eyes are like looking at it at that moment. I don't know. I'm fucking weird. But, uh. <laughs> I hate when I was a kid and they would do like tornado warnings or news bulletins when they would come in with breaking news. It would scare the hell out of me because, again, it was like the television itself knew that you were there and was grabbing you by the lapels and going, hold on, I got something to tell you, which is freaky because I was used to seeing Bozo and Clutch Cargo. I mean, I, I don't, you know, all of a sudden Marty McNeely comes on to tell me that uh, that Elvis is dead. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, Marty, how did you know that I was here? Uh, so that's how I feel with Twitter. It's like when you look at it, I don't want to, I, I granted, I understand the concept of Twitter and that a thousand people are getting it at once, but also the magic of Twitter, <laughs> the magic of Twitter is that it, uh, is that it communicates to you individually. So you look at it that way. And if you get a note that says Tila Tequila is dead and imagine if you're a fan of hers, you'd be like, Oh my God, because that's from her official Tila Tequila Twitter. Now, all of that said. I'm willing to bet 51.49% on this, folks, that she sent that herself. That's my guess. 
And I'm also willing to bet that she smashed up her own house and locked her own dog in the trunk of a car. I'm willing to bet that she... Okay, that's what... The, I should say that. <laughs> after, <laughs> after those messages came out, Tila Tequila posted a note saying, Oh my gosh, it's been a tough night. Four in the morning, I just got home. Uh, I have a stalker, and he destroyed my house, and he locked my dog in a trunk. And uh, da, da, da. But I'm okay, guys. It's all right. I'm fine. Uh, and I personally, I believe that she did it all herself because that's her deal. She's like, because she, you know, you see her walking on the street, she looks like Gizmo from fucking Gremlins and, and, and with huge tits, which is great. Except I can tell you when I watched Gremlins, I was not thinking, boy, he'd be really cute with huge tits. I mean, that was not, he was cute enough. He, he didn't need to put a fake rack on goddamn Gizmo. Uh, if, if I might quote, uh, uh, Stripe, Gizmo caca with big tits. All right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that's who she looks. She looks like Gizmo from the Gremlins, or she looks like a Manchichi. Remember Manchichis when we were kids? Uh, you probably don't. Uh, when we were kids, all of us collectively. Uh, <laughs> but she, that's what she looks like to me. She's got a weird, like a monkey face, kind of a half monkey face, and uh, but a big rack. I mean, she's got an amazing body, but she's just a fucking uh, uh, horrible person. And again, I don't know her, but I mean, I just know from what the, uh, uh, I know someone who does know her or knows of her or has. Worked in close proximity to her. I don't want to out anybody here, but I know someone who might know something about this, and she's not good, uh, a good person. So I, that's why when I heard that she did the Twitter thing, I was kind of like, whoa, that's kind of chilling. I know she fucking did this. I know she did it. She smashed up everything in her own goddamn house and locked her own dog. And I'm sure she was like a big production when she took the dog out. She's like, hold on, honey, it's just for publicity. And she slammed him in the trunk of the fucking car. <laughs> oh, double T. That's right, double T. I called her that. I don't know her. Ah, uh, Double T. I, what does your business card look like, Double T? How does that grab you? Your business card is crap. Uh, I am t- I just, she's just, it's, why is she a celebrity? Because she, because she like kissed a girl at MTV and like got a bunch of downloads. I don't, this whole thing, this is where it's trending, folks. This is what I need to be. I need to be that. I need to be the vanguard of that. I need to, and granted, the vanguard has already passed, but I need to somehow get swept up into the into the jet stream of it and get pulled along and get sort of famous and, and sell stuff, right? Don't I got to do that? There's stuff for sale, folks. Uh, <laughs> we, we started selling the, uh, the, the box set, the year one box set last week. And it's, it's thank you so much to all the people who've bought it. Uh, the first guy who bought it was a, uh, there's a guy who's been, listening and writing me for a long time from Australia. And, uh, and he bought the box set and, uh, he bought the first one ever, which was great. And, and here's my favorite part is he wrote me a note and he was saying that, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he has a girlfriend from New Zealand and he's from Australia. I don't even know how that works, folks. I, I, that's, that's Hatfields and the McCoys at that point, isn't it? Don't they hate one another? Aren't they, uh, you know, isn't one of them a sheep fucker and the other one a convict? I have no idea how that works. <laughs> Uh, and by, by the way, they've listened since the beginning. I would like to welcome them to their final show. So, <laughs> but, uh, I thought those people hated one another, but apparently, uh, the, the, the draw, cause I, I watched flight of the Concords and they had an episode this year where, uh, cause the flight of the Concords guys, Jermaine and Brett are from New Zealand and Jermaine wound up banging some Australian chick and Brett and, uh, and, uh, Murray, the other two guys didn't want to go near him because like he, like he had crossed over somehow. <laughs> So I don't know how these people are working it, but uh, I, it's good to know, however, that the one thing that brings them together is me. I am I am the key, folks, to solving the the Great Barrier Reef Australia New Zealand conflict that has been raging for it since since the convicts got off the boat in Australia. It's been raging since the first sheep got banged and since the first uh, uh, you know wallaby got dingoed. I don't know I don't know what the lingo is down there. Since the first kangaroo was cooked and eaten, these people have been at, at each other's throats. Uh, since the first Aborigine was uh, was kicked in the didgeridoo, since that happened, <laughs> those people have hated one another. But I bring them together. Uh, and and uh, this listener from Australia wrote me and uh, and saying that uh, his girlfriend from New Zealand listens to the show, and she was casting aspersions on my stories and my claims of financial hardship. <laughs> Uh, because she said, how could he do this show for like a year and not like make any money or do anything? And it's always terrible. And he's always wind up, he always has these horrible things happen. And, uh, and, and so he must be making money somehow. There must be something going on. (laughs) This must be false. And, uh, and I, I got to tell you, that's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Cause I love the idea that I am this eccentric millionaire (laughs) who has created this persona to pass the time between cashing checks. I'm this guy who's like independently wealthy who went, what if I created a lout? What if I just went ahead 
And I said, yeah, why don't I go ahead and make some money playing a meathead on the internet? That's what I want to do. And by the way, make some money. I mean, what if I made no money for a year? Which won't matter, because I have my coffers filled with cash from my old days of convincing people to send me money for no reason. All those years of buying and flipping real estate have made me so rich beyond my wildest dreams that I think it's time I went ahead and tackled the internet by creating some sort of two-fisted vagabond character that people could feel sorry for and send $20 after a year. <laughs> That's brilliant. I wish I was that guy. That would be so great if I was rich and I made this all up to be, like, to be, to what, to steal $20 from you folks? That would be beautiful. You know what it's like? It's like I'm the, Bru I'm the Bruce Wayne of podcasting. That's what I am. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm Batman, but instead of a superhero, I'm a dick. Like, I put on a suit and I turn into a jackass. That's what I do every Wednesday. I only fight crime every Wednesday via the internet in a headset. I'm actually wearing a suit now. It's, it's not unlike Batman's. It's very cool. And uh, uh, it's got, like, a Riddler-type question mark with a, with a fist on it. That's with my, my chest logo. <laughs> I love it. The fact that she would even think that. I, I don't believe this guy. I'm sorry. That, this is not right. This is absolutely not true. There's no way this guy isn't loaded. You've heard me on here. Where do I get money from? Did I, I make up the job. I make up the everything. I make up the copper wiring store. I made it all up. Everything is completely falsified. Oh, that would be great. I wish it was. God damn it. I wish it was. That would be worth it. I was like, I'm like the Kaiser Soze of, of fucking podcasting. I just, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing you that he fell asleep at a 7-Eleven. <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. Just one week, you're going to try to download this. It's going to be nothing. You're going to be like, what happened to him? What happened to him? He and the talent of Mr. Ripley are on a fucking boat in the Caribbean somewhere. That's where he's at. He's spending his ill-gotten gains. It's like the end of Wild Things. Me and, uh, uh, you know, Nev Campbell are off spending all the dough while uh, Denise Richards and everybody else is dead. Did Denise Richards die in that? I don't remember. I think she did. I know Matt Dillon did. Bill, Bill Murray made some money in that movie. Oh, spoiler alert, by the way. Sorry. Damn it. If you haven't seen Wild Things, or if you have seen it up to the part where they're in the pool making out and you just kept beating off and then stopped it there, because that's what I did. God knows I would watch that movie over and over just to that, just to see Denise Richards get out of the pool in the blue suit and it's she's wet. She like dies in the pool and oh my God. And you just see her fucking brown nipples through the suit. Jesus Christ, I might jerk off now. <laughs> it's a good thing you've got your laptop top up because it's, I, actually I could probably make it over there. I could probably make it over at the laptop top. Oh, man. Uh, I can go for distance, folks. That's what I'm telling you. All right. I, uh... <laughs> So yeah, that, I don't even know why I got sidetracked on Denise Richards, but uh, but uh, that, and that's actually what it's called when you uh, when you skeet skeet you, you on Denise Richards, you sidetrack on Denise Richards. That's what it's called. When you drop a skeet skeet on Denise Richards, it's you. I I, I sidetracked Denise Richards last night. I got sidetracked on Denise Richards. Oh uh, god. Another one that I think I might have a shot at in like five years, as long as this empire keeps growing, this internet empire. As long as you people keep putting me on your shoulders and sending me money for things that I've made up. Again, you you meet them all on the way down. I've said that in a previous show. Pam Anderson on her way down. I'm on my way up. I don't know. Maybe. Am I? I think I am. Either way, at some point, we're going to meet in the middle and boom, that's it. I'm driving it home. And that'll be a great story to tell that I, I banged her hepsy husk on its way out of celebritydom. On its way out of being famous, she threw me a quick one. I saw her in line the other day with, uh, uh, and it said, and I don't even know why, it said, uh, Pam Anderson, no panty upskirt. And, uh, and I clicked on it, of course, uh, because that's who I am, folks. I, even though I have seen her vagina so much that I could describe it in a police sketch to the, to the letter. I could go into a police station in America, any police station in America right now, and describe Pam Anderson's vagina to, to a point where it would look like a fucking photograph. This guy drawing it, would he would just be like, does it look like that? That's it. Absolutely. That's it. I could describe her vagina in a way that if it was somehow an Amber Alert, the cops would find it immediately. If someone had stolen her vagina, I could, I could, I could close my eyes and find it. That's, that's how familiar I am with Pam Anderson's nether regions. That's how familiar I am with Pam Anderson's beef. I could absolutely find that gupper from, from, uh, just from memory. But I still clicked on this fucking link.
Pam Anderson, no panty upskirt. Well, why not? It's like, you know what it was? It's like seeing an old friend. It's like, <laughs> it's like having lunch with someone from high school who you haven't seen. And, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'd like to refamiliarize myself with that. Absolutely. Let's click on that link. It's just, it's like having a bowl of soup with a 20 year old pal. It's like seeing Max. I know Max and I know her vagina. I've known them almost equally as long. And, uh, and I would be comfortable having dinner with either of them. So, so I, uh, I click on a Pam Anderson, no panty upskirt. And, uh, and I got to tell you, folks, awful, just an awful picture. It, 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 I mean, technically the words were correct. It was a Pam Anderson, no panty upskirt, but she was getting out of a car in a demure fashion. So I, where's the fun in that? Nobody wants to see that. I want to see her, uh, you know, like if her pussy's playing center field, that's what I want to see. I want to see her kicked back, feet in the stirrups, waiting to catch a fly ball. That's what I'm checking out. That's what, don't even make a link for it if it's just her demurely getting out of a car. So she's wearing like a short skirt and she's like, her legs are kind of swung and all you saw was like kind of the top, but it's like, you, you know, we all know that she shaves and, and waxes and is smooth, but uh, seriously, I don't, I, I've seen it. I mean, it, I, you need to show me something that I'm not going to see. Like, uh, you know, if, if she has like a, like if there's a word bubble that says hi there coming out, like if she does that, if she busts out a, a, a Lawrence Hilton Jacobs from Welcome Back Cotter, if she does a Freddie Boom Boom Washington with a vagina, then I am on board with it. But however, I, so I, I look in a, uh, but here's my favorite part of the picture though. It's like, yeah, all right, no pink at all. No pink at all, folks. But her knees completely bruised up. Both knees covered in bruises. I, and I just, I, I again, it doesn't take much for me to think about Pam Anderson doing uh, horrible, dirty things. But the second I saw that, I was just kind of like, well, you know what? I, so I would have changed the link. I would have just said, you know, uh, Pam Anderson, busy on a Tuesday. Like, it should have been called that or something. Uh, Pam Anderson and her money makers, And uh, and then it would just been a bruised up knee. See, that would have been funnier. Like, cause normally you would click on it going, oh, that must be her tits. But instead you click it and it's bruised up knees. You're like, yep, that's absolutely Pam Anderson and her money makers. <laughs> oh, Pam. I have a shot, right? I do, eventually. Uh, it's so funny, even though I know that it was just like, it, it's what it's been through. I know what it's been through. And yet still. Oh. And I'm I'm beefing Vince for putting his tongue in a hooker's mouth. I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, I'm about to put my dick in the jaws of a lion. That and that, you know what that would be, that's a trick. I pay to see that if Siegfried and Roy do that. Unfortunately, Siegfried and Roy are doing that, but not on stage. They're they're just the two of them are putting their dick in the jaws of a lion at home for fun. They're just and that, that's their way of training, said lion. Uh, uh, and that's why. And finally, Montecor is like, "Fuck this! I'm taking out this guy's neck because uh, I've had his dick in my mouth enough. He's not gonna care if I put his fucking goofy neck in my mouth." And they've had so much surgery, you know, their their heads look like penises anyway. So Montecor, that's what happened. Montecor got a little confused. He was like, "Oh look, I, I got to put his cock in my mouth," and it was like his th- fucking shiny neck. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm not afraid to take people on nine years after this thing happened. <laughs> I I fucked with Elvis. Why not? I went after Elvis. He's been dead 90 years. I took on the king. Uh, Although, you know what? I got into the king because of Jessica Simpson that day. And uh, Jessica Simpson has upskirt photos online now, too. As a matter of fact, uh, they're not no panty upskirts, but they're upskirts. And, uh, and, oh, they're just, they they are, uh, you know, Jessica. uh, But again, this is not on her. Nobody should be taking these fucking pictures of her. You know what I mean? She's she's walking in a short skirt to dinner, and some guy, you know, slides in on a Jiffy Lube pallet underneath her and takes like nine pictures. That's not fucking cool. She should have. If she should have, you know, the thing is, unfortunately, she just puts her head down and marches through the flash bulbs. But if she'd have looked down and seen this guy doing a tune-up, she could have fucking put a stiletto in his eye. Jesus Christ. Uh, because it is just a, you know, he's got their shots of her ass, and 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 then and one of them you get a beef shot, like there's a little bit of a, a you know, a backdoor shot. And, uh, and, uh, and, and honestly, I, I can't blame the paparazzi guy for trying to get it because, you know, she's the one we're all waiting for, Jessica Simpson. She's, you know, everybody else have somehow said they're, she's like the great white whale of vagina photographs at this point. She's the, she's the elusive one that no one has captured. Uh, there was a little side one. There was like a little lip shot. Uh, she was on stage singing like, you know, eight years ago or something, even before she married Nick, I think, uh, which is, you can find that online. Uh, folks, I have nothing if not an encyclopedic knowledge of upskirt shots of celebrities. 
and uh, because they're vivid to me. Again, they stick with me like this the shot from when I was a kid, and I found those books in an alley. I can't, I cannot shake it. I am a fucking, I am a porn connoisseur. I, I love it. Uh, and it's not even like I love it. It's like I gotta see it, I guess. But I don't really. But it's only, you know what? It's part of my weird information thing too. Like I don't ever want somebody to go, "Do you see that?" And I say, "No." I don't ever want that to be the case. I want to go. Yep, I saw it. And it's gotten me. It's gotten me into trouble. And I've tried to really temper it over the last few years. The worst part. Oh, we were out one time. And, and it's not just porn information, by the way, folks. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make sure you know that. It's not like I need to know everything about porn before anybody else does. But I need. Uh, it's like sports, and I like to be the first person to call you and tell you that somebody died. I told you, like, with my mom, when, with Elvis, when I ran in and I told her, you know, Mom, Elvis is dead. And she's like, what? Because uh, I just, I need to be the guy who breaks news. I don't know what that, I'm sure some shrink out there is going to email me and, uh, and tell me what that pathology is, but I don't know what it is. Just, I, I, just knowledge is power, and I need to have it. I don't have any power in anything else in my life. Who knows? I, I don't fucking know. But, uh, but, I mean, it's like, one time I was at dinner with Pardo, we were on the road, and, uh, and I, and I just, over his shoulder, we were at a sports bar. Like, I wasn't even thinking. And the Masters, which just actually went this weekend, but it was a few years ago. So, and I went, Phil Mickelson just won the Masters because he hit a putt. And Jimmy just looked up at me and goes, I was taping the entire tournament. And I was going to watch it when I got home. And uh, because I, I, first of all, I didn't know anybody was ever going to tape a golf tournament. I mean, I, that's, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm off the hook there, I think, a little bit. Uh but he was so mad that I ruined it. And I don't blame him. I don't fucking blame him because that's terrible. You don't want to do that. So now it's like when when we were friends, we used to then, I used to preface every email with like, uh, have you seen this? With just like, a, like a, a question mark, just so I didn't talk about it or ruin anything, any television show, Survivor, anything at all. I just, I had to make sure I didn't ruin it for him. And, uh... And what's funny is I got my comeuppance on that because I've had it happen twice now where I was at the sushi bar once and a guy, uh, uh, he's like, I was wearing a bear jacket or something. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, a Bears fan? I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, wow, can't believe they lost to the, uh, they beat the Broncos today, huh? I'm like, dude, I'm fucking TiVoing that game. Eat your spicy tuna roll and shut the fuck up. You just ruined everything. And, and it happened to me at a movie theater last year, too, where I was, uh, uh, it was the day of the NFC Championship game. Uh, not last year, two years ago. Jesus. I'm, I'm going way back, folks. I don't even know. It's not even worth fucking bringing up. But who cares? Uh, I was leaving a movie theater. Uh, Karen and I went to the movies, and uh, I had taped the Packers and the Giants, and I was really looking forward to going home and watching it. And uh, I walked out of the movie theater, crowded, uh, uh, and a guy holds up his phone and goes, Dude, Giants just beat the fucking Packers in overtime. Like, yells it to everybody in the fucking room. And, uh, and I wanted to just start fucking windmill punching everybody in a five-mile radius. I was so fucking furious. Because, again, when you're looking for... I knew exactly how Jimmy felt. Of course, I didn't take four days of a goddamn golf tournament. <laughs> and I also didn't go to a sports bar where they were showing that golf tournament and eat a sandwich. I don't know how he didn't look up at the team. That's, that's amazing discipline uh, on the part of Jimmy Pardo to sit there and eat a, uh, you know, a club sandwich or whatever the fuck and not look up at the TV screen where they're showing the Masters. That's insanity. To be in your hotel room, how do you not go on the internet and go to ESPN? And how do you, I don't know how we avoided it, but but that makes what I did even fucking worse. Because somehow over four days, he had avoided all information about a golf tournament while he was on the road. So you're sitting in a room bored out of your fucking skull, and you want nothing more than to go on the internet or go to ESPN.com. He didn't, because he didn't want to know what was going on in the golf tournament. And then uh, fat asshole with a mouthful of chicken wings goes, dude, Mickelson won the Masters, ruins everything. I do nothing if not ruin everything for everybody, folks. <laughs> but uh, but that's the thing is I it's too much information and 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 that's why I have uh, you know like I said that's why I have this encyclopedic knowledge of upskirts and porn stuff <laughs> because I I have to know about it. But unfortunately to you folks that translates to Mike loves porn. Let's get him some porn. So. <laughs> I wind up getting links to the most horrifying things in the world. I got to be honest. I don't know where you folks are. I mean, I I know where some horrible things are, and I've been there. But Jesus Christ, folks! I what are you digging up? I, I there. Thanks to you folks, I am I am never going to drink Coke again, and certainly not out of the can. Let's put it that way, because I I saw something horrendous, and there's like a lip on a Coke can that made me think, how is that happening? And uh, and then. You know, I, I, I talked about anal ladies world record. Well, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, Coke cans and Nerf footballs do not belong in, in the place. Literally, one of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> and that thing is a Nerf football <laughs> or a baseball bat uh, or, or my email address attached to that clip. I don't know who you folks are and why you're sending that to me. 
But that's like that's gutter porn. If you want to send me celebrity porn, that's fine. I don't care. Send me send me all sorts of upskirt jobs. Because I'm a, I, and the odds are, folks, I got to tell you, I've seen it. I've seen them all. Don't you're not going to fool me. You're not going to slip one past me. And uh, you you think that you're going to go? Hey, guess what I came up with? Unless you took it that fucking day, you're not going to surprise me with any sort of uh, uh, porn. Uh, because we've all seen them. Uh, but that's how I am with porn now. Like, I'm like, you know, Jessica Simpson, we, we all are waiting to see the upskirt shots of Jessica Because we've all seen, you know, we've all seen Lindsay Lohan's vagina. We've all seen Britney Spears' vagina. And, and I use the collective we all, like the, the nation. Uh, we've seen it either in photos or we've seen it in person. Uh, but now, but Jessica's the one we haven't seen. Although we get close in this uh, these shots. But uh, but they're not flattering shots, and they shouldn't be. She's going out to dinner with fucking Tony Romo. It's not like she's getting all gussied up. Like whenever you see these, it's funny in the new Allure magazine, they have celebrities naked, and it's uh, Padma Lakshmi or Lakshi or whatever the chick from Top Chef, and Chelsea Handler is naked, and uh, you know they look great. Those photos look great because a a team of guys and a you know and a battery of of navy seals went at those photos with <laughs> photoshop and and you know scalpels and and uh, you know painting everything they went and they they fixed them they made them look good naked you know not that they don't look good naked but it doesn't matter i really i mean I, they're celebrity hot chicks i mean it's like you know i'm still going to bury my face in chelsea handler's muff whether or not it photographs well or not <laughs> I mean, I don't care if her vagina has a best side because I'm going in the front way. That's how it's happening. <laughs> or if she wants to flip over, I go in the back door. It doesn't matter to me. I don't give a fuck what it looks like on celluloid. I'm in. But I guess if they got to be naked and they got to go ahead and get it sandblasted, and, uh, that's fine. They look good and that's great. But I, I just, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, it, like with Jessica Simpson, like everybody's like, oh, God, these pictures look terrible and it's unflattering. I don't fucking care. Are you telling me you're still not going to hit that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, 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 I fuck O.J. Simpson to get to Jessica Simpson. Seriously. I don't fucking care. I fuck Ashley and Pete Wentz just to get a, a, a sniff of Jessica. Honestly. Because I, I, it's funny. I got a bunch of grief from people for making fun of what she looked like in those pants. Yeah, she was, you know, I, again, folks, I'm not a prize. I understand that. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, I would never, I absolutely, I wouldn't talk to her or even think. Bullshit. Are you kidding me? Fuck that. I, I tackle her like Lawrence Taylor breaking Jill Theismann's leg. Forget about it. She's on the ground, and I'm, I'm fucking, I'm finished before she even knows my name. You know, we're lucky I don't go off in my, in my Pima Cotton briefs just thinking about it. So who cares if they don't think she photographed well? She didn't mean to be photographed well. She's going to fucking, she's going to, uh, you know, Mr. Chow's for dinner. She didn't, nobody goes to dinner, nobody sits there and goes, you know what, I'm going to go get a bowl of chop suey, I hope my ass looks great. <laughs> nobody! <laughs> celebrity or no celebrity, nobody has to do ass work before they go out to goddamn dinner, they shouldn't have to, because nobody thinks that a goddamn midget's going to tool by with a Kodak. Nobody! <laughs> let these people have their dinner in peace, and then if they get, if you get an unflattering shot of their ass, just let's all go, you know what, her ass took the day off, it took Sunday off, that's all. But it's still a Jessica Simpson ass that you would fucking climb in and sit inside for a fucking hour and a half. Are you kidding me? I, w I would be fucking punching that cat unconscious. Are you kidding me? I don't give a fuck what it looks like on film. I'm in. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. All right, so... <laughs> and again, I'm not advocating the, the, the what these photographers did. I'm, I, it's it's become a game at this point. Like I said, it's they're all chasing you know five grand or whatever the fuck. I mean, if you've been in Los Angeles and you've ever seen Kim Kardashian walk out of a Starbucks into a sea of assholes and flash bulbs, <laughs> then you know that that's just what it is. It's it's the game. It's that's the game in town. That's it. We don't have a football team. That's our NFL. <laughs> Our NFL is is celebrities walking around with fra uh, lap, you know frappuccino. I was gonna say flattes, flattes and rappuccinos. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're called. I don't drink coffee, folks. Shocking. I do this all on my own. I, I'm completely unfueled by any sort of uh, coffee type beverage. But uh, but man, I, I, you know that's the game in town. Is that you know they're trying to hide their vaginas and guys are trying to get pictures of them. That's it. And because then, then there's girls like there's women like Shauna Sand who aren't even trying to hide their vagina. Literally, Shauna Sand, she she might have like a you know a, a Bugs Bunny hand coming out of her vagina with a sign that says "Look at me." I mean, it's like she's <laughs> she's got it on display. I mean, it's like it's just there. It's out there. It's like she, uh, you know, she her vagina actually, <laughs> you know, she has like a keychain where she beep beep. She like you know locks it down so people know where it's at. 
But that's the game, man. I mean, that's how you, again, our friend Tila Tequila walking around like Gizmo fucking walks out the other day and she's, she was wearing essentially uh, like a handkerchief and a jacket. <laughs> And then went, oh, I'm warm, and took the jacket off. So a 9,000 guys took her goddamn picture, because that's how it works in this town. <laughs> so I don't want to hear anybody beefing about how their vagina didn't look good. Nobody nobody goes ahead and does a vagina check before they leave the house. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, all right, I do, folks. I, I do a vagina check, but not in my own, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I have a hole in a wall, and I, I gander at a neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> And her, and her vagina looks fantastic before I go out, let me tell you that. Because I refuse to leave the house unless her vagina looks good, okay? Her vagina is die cut. Her vagina is foil stamped. Her vagina is embossed. That's about $4 a vagina, folks. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, that vagina is it's marketing. That's what it is. That vagina is your calling card. That vagina doesn't fit in a Rolodex because that vagina doesn't belong in a Rolodex. That vagina, when you open it up, tells you crowds guaranteed. That's what I. That's what that vagina brings to the table. This vagina isn't an officer. This vagina doesn't have any sort of title. Big deal. I know vaginas that make ten thousand dollars a year, and someone's a CEO. That doesn't matter to me. My vagina tells you that crowds are guaranteed. That's what I bring to the table. I bring you the eyeballs. My vagina brings you the eyeballs. What you choose to do with them at that point is up to you. But I can tell you that my vagina is guaranteed to bring those eyeballs to the table and you can do whatever you want to at that point because my vagina has done, the, the, done all the legwork. Now you just got to bring it home. I fucking love Joel Bauer. <laughs> you call that your vagina? Your vagina is crap because it is crap. What's that vagina? 60 pound? Strathmore stock? Takes a crease, that vagina takes a crease, right? <laughs> can we tear that vagina? Absolutely we can. <laughs> Not my vagina. My vagina tells you the crowds are guaranteed. <laughs> you guys can write me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can write me at MySpace.com slash Mike Schmidt Comedy. Uh, I want to remind you folks to go to uh, MikeSchmidtComedy.com and go to, uh, if you go to the store page, you can go ahead and buy the t-shirts that are on sale. Uh, those are the uh, I'm going to eat pie out of your skull t-shirts. Uh, I'm sure eventually we're going to have my vagina is die cut t-shirts, but not right yet. <laughs> right now we just have the uh, the, uh, the I'm going to eat pie out of your skull t-shirts. So you can go to the store page at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. And uh, check those out. Or also go to lookatmeshirts.com. They have the, the shirt there for purchase. Also, remember that year one of the 40-year-old boy, the uh, the compilation year one box set of uh, remastered uh, sound and new theme music and artwork and also liner notes, the entire package is available. $25 also at the store on my website. Uh, go ahead and pick that up. Uh, I, I, and I thank you very much, all of you, for all of the purchases that you've made so far. And I want to throw this out. You, I, I, I write this to some people. If you buy the, the year one box set or you buy a shirt, do me a favor. Write me and tell me what you think. Uh, I, I need feedback on, uh, you know, when it gets to you and, you know, the download time. And, and I want to make sure that, the you know, what, what you think. I, I'm very interested to find out what everybody thinks about what we've done. And that will allow me to know what I'm supposed to do going forward, uh, whether or not I just shut this entire fucking operation down or, <laughs> or, or I make plans for the future. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, again, maybe I just I quit. I pack it and I become a bus butler. Maybe I just do that. <laughs> I grab my uh, three-hole punch and my uh, my pillbox hat, and I go on the bus, and I start making sure that everybody's got their transfer in order. Maybe I do that. Uh, or I continue to do this show and, and fool everybody. Or I, and I get my uh, shit together, and I gather it up, and I have laser-like intensity, and I try to convince you people to do the things that you're supposed to do, and let's all make me goddamn famous. Again, I want you to stand up, take your shirt off, and yell, fuck you, right now, wherever you're at. I don't care. I know you did it earlier in the show. Do it again just because they don't think you'll ever do it again. <laughs> right now they're like, well, I know that's never going to happen. Although, you know what? Maybe you did it and you never even put your shirt back on. Maybe you're still sitting there topless a little embarrassed. Well, you know what? Then stand up and just go, you know what? Fuck you. And go ahead and put the shirt back on. And, uh, and you know what? I, I love the fact that I think I have all this power and I'm, I use it to make you take your shirts off and yell obscenities. That's that's how tiny my brain is. I'm not Joel Bauer. I can't I can't figure out how to guarantee crowd. I mean, I can guarantee a crowd, but I don't know what to do with it when it shows up. You know what I do? I make them take their shirts off and yell "fuck you" at people. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you make money? Why wouldn't you find a good? Why wouldn't I send you folks out to be my street team and write my name on fences? Why wouldn't I do that? 
It's like with Meg said. He goes, dude, why would you have every UFC fighter who's tough get a sandwich? I don't know. I don't know why I would do that. That makes me laugh. But, I mean, just that you would be so tough, you would be able to walk into a store and go give me a sandwich. That's hilarious. <laughs> so now I think it's hilarious that I use my, my cult of personality to get you folks to get topless and yell fuck. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and and my favorite part would be if you did it when you saw me. That would be like, let's make that like Dane Cook has the Sufi, and uh, and everybody has their like special greeting or whatever. I don't know what Stan, Stan Hope just has people who hand him cigarettes and and coffins. I don't know how that works for Doug. <laughs> I'm sure Jim Norton has people who come up and go fuck you. So I can't take that. Maybe I guess I got to take uh, I, I, whatever. We'll figure out something, some sort of greeting. But I like the topless part of it. We'll go ahead and figure that out. <laughs> Uh, oh, guys, remember to write Lily Von Stupp as well, right, our friend uh, Lily. I didn't uh, talk about her because apparently I now have uh, a, an avalanche of plugs that unfortunately... <laughs> uh, oh, I'm on Facebook, too. Go find me on Facebook. But go to find uh, Lily Von Stupp on Facebook, and uh, that way you can be her friend and then find me and become my friend. Uh, that's Lily, L-I-L-I, Von Stupp, S-C-H-T-U-P-P, Von, V-O-N. <laughs> And also write her at lily at burlesque411.com. That's L-I-L-I at burlesque411.com. Please do not forget about the Monday Night Tease, which is every Monday night at the uh, three clubs on uh, Santa Monica and Gower. Santa Monica and Vine. I always mess it up. Uh, so go to Santa Monica and Vine at uh, Monday Night Tease. Are you dancing this coming Monday? No. You are not. Is it because you are waiting for bruises to heal? Yes. I figured as much. <laughs> Uh, Lily will always say that she's going to dance and then she winds up having a very exciting weekend, <laughs> which winds up with her getting bruises that would cause an audience uh, of good thinking people to call the police at some point. <laughs> because if she went on stage and started dancing around and took off her you know, headpiece and, and, and her feather duster and, you know, had, and, and turned around, everybody would go, oh, my God, who's beating you? Not knowing that she's on board with it. Uh, although let's be that crowd is they completely know that she's on board with it there that every that crowd knows everything there is to know about her uh, except what they did not know is that she now has a niece who does burlesque <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't know this apparently uh, here in LA there's now a a new von Stupp not some other LA. woman oh not in LA where's she at I don't know. some some burlesque dancer is using the von Stupp name and saying that Lily von Stupp is her aunt but she's using the Lily von Stupp from blazing saddles <laughs> thinking people will know that from a movie from 1974 and also not knowing that lily our friend has been doing the burlesque with her name lily von stupp uh, for at least five years and also uh was born lily von stupp so she's been lily von stupp for at least 35 years so uh, uh so I, for her to go out and then i guess this woman is saying that she's her niece so now lily's like i gotta write a cease and desist letter to this woman which i cannot i have to tell you i can't wait to see I want her to send it via courier, but like it's by but the courier's like a male stripper and he's in a cop suit and he's like, uh ma'am, we've got to pull you over for excessive use of a von Stupp. And then they whip out like a, a subpoena and they do a crazy dance and get naked. That's how they do things in the burlesque world. Uh, although again, as I've said before, there might be like a drive by and if you find this woman in a drainage ditch uh, covered in glitter, we all know what happened. Uh, so get th take that fake von Stupp. You got to understand that you've made the real godmother of, of uh, Los Angeles burlesque, Lily Von Stupp, angry, and she is fucking coming after you, and you do not want that to happen. Believe me, you don't want you don't want your 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 snappers or your your the the usual suspects, the your jewel denials. You don't want all these people going out and and coming after you, backing up their friend Lily Von Stupp and her very successful Monday Night Tees. You don't want to wind up marked with the scarlet letter of stealing things in the burlesque world, do you? No, you don't. And I don't blame you. So you know what? Turn in your, uh, turn in your name back and think of a new name. Uh, be a uh, uh, you know, Victoria Vagina or, or, you know, one of those crazy pearl necklaces or, 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 you know, Bend Over Betty. Be one of those. But there you go. Let go of the Von Stupp name.
results, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm a decent guy. Because I am a jerk. And I'm not a jerk. Man, I am, uh, man, I'm an awful guy. I'm not an awful guy. I am not a good guy. But I don't think I'm a bad person overall. So, uh, and go ahead and by all means judge that. <laughs> I'm kind of a jag off. I got the future. What am I talking about? But I am a jag off. Uh, and I'm not a jerk. I'm a nice guy. It's just, I guess I have jerky tendencies. I've done so much ridiculous stuff, and then I, I wonder afterwards, I'm like, man, how come I don't uh, hang out with anybody? Here's why, because you're a dick. You're fit, 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 you're fit.